Hello everyone, welcome to the Glory Room. I'm Prophetess Lou. Hope you all are having a blessed day. Before we get started, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for loving us and taking care of us. Most of all, we thank you for saving our soul. Father God, we ask you today to be with us. We ask you to cover us in your blood, Father God. Father God, we ask you to help us apply this word to our lives. Help us to be a better person, Father God. Help us have a Christ-like mind. Father God, we ask you right now to strengthen us through our week, Father God. Father God, help us to just... Stay on track, Father God, and, and not grow weary in what we're doing, Father God. Father God, we ask you to bless the ones that are reading it and bless the ones that are hearing it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we have a new memory verse because it's Sunday, Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Verse of the day, 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles sorry, 10 and 14. Paul Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Lord, even consulted a medium for guidance, and did not inquire of the Lord. So the Lord put him to death and turned the kingdom over to David, son of Jesse. Subject, guidance through the many outlets. Christian truths, so I'm going to say it and pause behind each one to give you an opportunity to say it if you like. I'm seeking only God. I am placing all my hope in God. I'm willing to wait. I'm connected to God. The read time is devotion is 7 minutes and 42 seconds. This verse shows us how one wrong move can cause so many bad moves to happen. Because when we get to the place where we aren't praying, we aren't listening to his instructions, we would try to do other things to fix one problem instead of going to the source. If Saul had gone to the source initially, he would have never had this problem. But then I guess David would have never been king. Still, suppose Saul went to God. Let's, let's just suppose this. That he went to God first and said, I'm sorry for having jealousy and bitterness in my heart. In that case, I say this a lot. The spirit of bitterness and malice and rage and anger can cause other spirits to come in and see this was the spirit of disobedience, the spirit of rebellion, the spirit of witchcraft, and other spirits came in. They took over because he allowed that one spirit to do this. We must be careful with how we allow the things of this world to come in and change our views or how we deal with our relationship with God. Leviticus 19 and 31. Do not turn to mediums or necromizers. Do not seek them out and so make yourself unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. See, the Bible tells us not to seek these people, not to do anything other than what we should. We are making ourselves unclean, and many people are going to psychics and using crystals for direction to promote, promote healing, etc., and other things to find answers because everyone wants to know their future still. What good is it to know the future and not have God in it? If we call ourselves believers or Christians, we must seek God and whatever he tells us. We must be okay with. No, this isn't going to happen immediately or we will not always agree with it. But whatever he says, we must do. And many of us aren't happy with our lives now. So we are thinking, hey, the future must be better. I can't say what the future will hold, but I know if we walk in God and his law, meditate on his word day and night and focus on building a solid relationship with God, we won't have to worry about what we don't have or will have. We must sh make sure we are walking in him. John 6 and 35, Jesus said to them, I'm the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger. Whoever believes in me shall not never thirst. This is, this is true physically, mentally, and emotionally. When we come to Jesus, he will give us food to eat. We'll never be thirsty. Why? Because we place our trust in him. We must not have precisely, we might not have precisely what we want to eat, but it's why we must learn to be content. He will replenish us if we are spiritually dry, but if we often seek blessings and money or things. Still, the Holy Spirit is saying today, consult me. I will replenish you spiritually. I help you through the rough times and guide you through your dry season. But if we are consulting other things and people like Saul, we will always have a problem. We must learn to make God the head and leave him there. We do this by trusting in him. If you don't trust God, you will never have a strong relationship with God. God wants us to start by consulting and praying to him at the beginning of our day. He wants us to desire to be with him and have a relationship with him. He won't make us do it at all. The world is looking for something quick. And for instance, have you noticed there's more fast food chains everywhere? It's five McDonald's where I live. Why? Why? Because people want their food fast and they don't want to wait. And that's the same thing with knowing their future. That's the same thing with prayer. They want their prayers answered with just like their food. 
fast. Still, God isn't going to give a quick answer all the time. Lamentations 3 and 25. The Lord is good to those who wait for him and the soul who seeks him. Lamentations 3 and 25. Isaiah 30, 18. Therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a good at justice. Blessed are, blessed are those who wait for him. Isaiah 30 and 18. Psalms 37 and 7, be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who pro prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. Psalms 37 and 7. So these verses lets us know there are going to be some waiting. And when we do, he will show us mercy because he just he's just and fair. We don't have to worry over what other people will get and have because they might, they might obtain what they wanted the wrong way. And when we wait on God, we will obtain precisely what God has for us. Saul could have waited. So he couldn't wait. He was so focused on doing what he wanted and seeking whom he wanted that he sought Samuel. Sometimes we, might, we must slow down and see if it's a pattern in our lives. Maybe we need to figure out how to stop it and change how we do things and see if God has something new for us outside our unusual pattern. Today, we looked at Saul and saw where he went wrong. He went and sought a medium for his life, and, and he stopped hearing from God because of his disobedience. He didn't see that his actions were getting him nowhere, but sometimes we can't see it because we are after the quick stuff. God wants us to know that our, our actions have consequences, but his love is greater. All we must do is come to him with patience and listen for his voice. Listening to the voice of psychics and, and being well guided by other things are going to lead us to God. It's going to lead us away from God. And a lot of people don't find anything wrong with seeking the expertise of psychics. But my friends, this is wrong. And when we put someone else ahead of our lives instead of God, we will always be led astray. The Holy Spirit wants nothing but the best for us. But if you we're not willing to wait, if we're not willing to seek, if we're not willing to read our word, what do we expect God to do today? We must do a little bit more than what we usually do. God wants all of us, all of us not pieces to seek him with our whole heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today, for life, health, and strength. Lord, I ask you to be with us. Show us your ways. We want to dwell in your presence. God, show us how to let go of the things we think we need and to hold on to you. Father, we bind the spirit of deviation, rebellion, and sorcery. In Jesus' name, we ask you right now to give us your strength to seek you and you alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Reference, Isaiah 64 and 6, from old from of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ears. No one eyes has seen besides God, besides God, besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. Isaiah 64 and 6. Psalms 130 and 5. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. Psalms 130 30 and 5. Genesis 49 and 18. I wait for your salvation, O Lord. Genesis 49 and 18. Further reading, Proverbs 11. Leviticus 11. Job 38. In 2 Chronicles 36, this ends God has through the many outlets. I pray you all have a blessed day. Remember Jesus loves you. I love you too. Remember at the bottom of this devotional, it will be your memory verse, the verse of the day, your further reading, your reference, and the links to read this devotional if you care to read it. Remember to share us with family members or friends or share us on, online if you can. If you have time, please go like us on, on YouTube. Thank you. Be blessed.